designed to enable you to work in the best interest of your soul. They will move you into an entirely new state of awareness. Use these tools to become fully conscious of your God self. Right there, she talks about the God self. And what she's talking about is the subject of today's lesson, which is the soul. What is the soul? I, I, I was told all kinds of things about the soul. I was told that the soul was my subconscious. I was told that my soul was an awareness that never changed. I was told that my soul was constantly changing. Uh, I was given religious definitions and, and uh, uh, pop psychology definitions. And I got totally confused as to what the soul was. Now, of course, the soul is just a term. But for the purposes of this class, I think we should gather together and think about what the soul is. When I began to study with Jane 30 years ago, one of the first things she said was, your soul is a fragment of God. What does that mean, a fragment of God? Well, it's a part of the whole. And yet it is one with the entire experience of God in wholeness. You, you are a soul in evolution. You, you will hear this said over and over again in this class. And this means that you're on a journey to unfold your awareness as your soul into your full soul consciousness. Your soul already exists um, in its perfected state as your infinite self. And depending on where you were born in the world, they call it all kinds of things. Somewhere in, in Asia, they might call it the Buddha nature or Atman, or in the West, they might call it Christ consciousness, or in a, a self-help book, they might call it your uh, higher self. But it's talking about the same thing. It's almost as if we're looking at this jewel of the infinite nature within us. And we'll use different terminologies depending on what, so what society we're born in, what our background is, uh, what religion we were raised in, or no religion at all. But one of the things about the Spiritual Power Tools book is that Jane had set as an intention to get rid of all jargon, to get rid of all dogma, all the religious doctrines, and all the uh, hocus pocus, spooky, spooky stuff that's out there, and to really boil things down to the essence in a practical way so that we could get excited about our soul's journey so that we could really enjoy ourselves as souls evolving. And isn't it fun to take an hour out of our lives to not pay attention to politics or all the different pursuits and all the problems and triumphs in the world, but on what's really important because ultimately, what are we? You are a soul evolving. I am a soul evolving. And that essence, that soul of us is one. One not only with each other, but one with the entire universe in God. So that fragment of God means that you as a soul are linked with God. In fact, every living thing has a soul essence. And in that way, we are all linked with every form of life that exists. Your soul aligns you with that God essence and with all beings on the planet. So this is where we dwell in oneness. My infinite self is the same as your infinite self, as the same as uh, some spiritual master's infinite self. On that level of the soul, the perfected soul, we are all one. And this soul is your true identity. Now, every day we wake up into an illusion in which we think that our ego or our personality self is our true identity. And that's part of the journey. That's actually, as we're going to learn, part of the design plan for our unfoldment and evolution. But it is not the ultimate truth. In fact, it is so far from the truth. The truth is that you have always been a soul evolving. Your soul, that perfected infinite self, is who you are ultimately and always have been. It was placed in you at the beginning of time. But there is something evolving in you, and that is your consciousness constantly evolving, growing, and expanding and awakening as your soul. So your soul and my soul, it's all the same. It, the picture came into my mind this morning about a rose. We call a plant a rose, but it's a rose whether it's a seed or a little tender green shoot or a bud or a fully 
bloomed flower or dropping its petals. It's all a rose. And that rose is perfect at every stage of its development, although it evolves and changes. In this imperfect analogy I'm sharing, your soul is already perfect and it's always changing, it's always growing, but in its expression, in its pure expression, it is just as a rose is a rose is a rose, the soul is the soul and it is the infinite self of you dwelling in what we call the fourth dimensional God consciousness. That is the dimension that's beyond this human third dimensional consciousness where we think we dwell. Your soul, which is that God part of you, has always been in you, has always been you, will always be with you. And in a sense, that soul wants to help you. It's constantly pushing out and supporting you in universal consciousness, in that infinite consciousness that many of us call God. You are an individual expression as a soul of that infinite consciousness, that awareness that is God. And it's so easy for us. And, you know, I, I go through this every day and you do too. We get stuck in that personality self, which many of us call an ego. But as soon as we are, begin to move out of the ego, then we can begin to move into our soul consciousness. And that soul awareness is aware of the presence of God within it. In fact, that soul awareness is one with God. I, I went through so many different teachings about the soul. Uh, you know, I was told so many things and I got confused about it. And then I decided I really wanted to learn about this. And thankfully, I was able to set aside all the things that I learned about the soul and realize that it was truly the essence of my being. That this soul that I am is conscious of the presence of God within it. And this soul awareness will gradually bring you into true harmony with yourself for the very first time. You've evolved over eons of time, but this is the first time when you are able to grow in that soul awareness so that you can experience yourself as a harmonious whole. And what this brings to us is it's marvelous. It's, it's a feeling of coming alive and it becomes an adventure, a soul journey. Well, it's important, though, as we're going forth on this journey, to be able to differentiate between the two levels of the soul and the personality, to distinguish between their vibrations, the soul's vibration and the personality's vibration. To discriminate between these two, there's a, there's a tool in the spiritual power tools, and we're going to um, skip ahead a little bit. You know, the tools are in the back of the book, but we're not going to wait until a few weeks down the road to introduce these tools. We want you to, in fact, all of us want to practice these tools starting the very first week. And the first tool that I want to introduce to you is found on page 43 in most of your books, and it's called the spiritual thermometer. Now, this spiritual thermometer is a very interesting concept that came to Jane Hart in meditation. And she was struggling with this problem of being stuck in lower states of consciousness and not knowing what to do about it, not knowing what to do with it, of being able or having a hard time being able to differentiate between the lower self, the ego self, and the God consciousness, the higher self, the soul. And so this image of the spiritual thermometer came into her awareness and she realized that Everything below a five on the spiritual thermometer, which was a bulb thermometer like the old fashioned ones, was her ego consciousness. It was being in drama, fear, and danger. It was what many of us call the lower self or the limited self or the personality self. And when you're in this lower state of consciousness, you do not want to act. You do not want to make any decisions because even if they seemingly are the right decisions, you're not making them from the consciousness where they will truly act in the best interest of your soul, which is up here above a five. You see, above a five is your soul consciousness. This is where we all want to be. And of course, we can't be there as evolving souls all the time, but we do have a choice. And this spiritual thermometer tool gives us that choice that we can exercise using this tool to move ourselves from the lower state up into a higher state. 
the six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 in consciousness is the higher self where we get guidance, where we get answers, where we're in clear thinking and we have focus, where we can make good decisions, have discernment and peace of mind. Now, you might say, well, what do I do when I'm below a five, when I'm in that personality, ego consciousness? I've, I've discerned, I've discriminated, and I've, I, I, I ask myself, where am I on the spiritual thermometer? Oh, I guess I'm about at a four because I'm feeling kind of fearful, but I don't feel too bad. And I can ask myself then, where would I like to be? I'd like to be around an eight. Now, this sounds very imaginative and um, like I'm making stuff up, but you know what? You, you are in charge of your consciousness and you can move your consciousness from that four to an eight. Just imagine, what would I feel like if I was at an eight? What would my breathing be like? What would my facial expression be? My posture? What's my energy feel like? And then see the energy move up. See the mercury in the thermometer move up to an eight. And then just feel that energy there. Now, perhaps you're feeling like life is hopeless and it's just terrible. You're down at a one. There are times that I feel like sometimes I'm below a one. And you've got to get honest about it and face that, but realize that it's empowering to know that you don't have to stay stuck there or anywhere in consciousness, that you can take your consciousness and move it even from a one. Now, maybe when I'm at a one, uh, I can't imagine being at an eight, but I can imagine being at a six. I can imagine just being over the line in my soul consciousness. And so I lift myself, lift my energy, lift my vibration and my consciousness up to a six. And I just imagine what is it like at this level? This truly will lighten you up, will open you up to get better answers. And um, this little tool is something you can use every day of your life. And you can all also, and as we go forth, as the weeks go on, we'll be able to do this. You can also discern what other people are uh, sharing with you with their energy and vibration, where they are on the spiritual thermometer. So you'll know not to try to convince or, or uh, argue over much with anybody below a five. You might just love and accept them where they are and offer support. So you can also use this in, in, in other relationship things. But there's um, another tool that's very important, which is um, uh, written about in the next chapter, which or, or I think three chapters down the road, which is called meditation. Meditation is the way to keep the channel open between yourself and your soul between your consciousness, your awareness, and your soul. And uh, it opens up centers in your brain that um, can't, well, what, what is it? Uh, University of Pennsylvania said that we are wired for God. They studied people who were meditating and they found that centers were opened up in the brain that allow people to have greater awareness. And so through meditating, you can open up this uh, this channel that you are to the universal energy of the infinite self, which you are as your soul perfected. And as you meditate, what you get to do is slowly but surely open up to and differentiate between the vibrations of the soul and the ego. Now, I mentioned a moment ago about the soul evolving, and many of us have learned about the evolution of science, the evolution of uh, forms. But here we're talking about the soul evolution. And it's almost as if when you were created as a soul, the DNA of God was put in you that knew how to grow you, to expand your awareness. And then you came down onto this planet and you evolved through many stages. And that is your evolving soul. And every soul does evolve. Now, some are moving more slowly than others, but the beauty of the soul evolution is that even when people seem to take a step back or seem to slip back, that soul essence, that learning, that evolution is never lost by the soul. It always exists there, and you truly can never lose 
what you have gained as a soul that's evolving. And again, as I said, some souls are evolving more slowly, some more quickly, but every soul is moving ahead. Each of us on this planet, no matter how we're showing up, is waking up to the fact that we are a part of God and we've always been a part of God. As part of this journey, it's important for us to realize that we need to know about our history as a soul. It's important to know that we have a history, something that has propelled us from one lifetime to another. And this helps us to grasp and get to know the whole being that we are. You see, the process of soul evolution is the process of waking up in our wholeness. And that means you, you got to get to know every aspect of your being, even aspects that you don't necessarily want to get to know. And that kind of lets you off the hook because you have to open up to and accept that your soul's journey includes thousands of consciousnesses that have gathered impressions over eons and eons of time until you became the human being form. Right now, you're experiencing yourself as a finite personality, trying to grow into the infinite consciousness that you are capable of becoming, of being aware of. And there are steps that you can take to help your soul take charge of your personality. You see, up till now, your personality has been a shell covering over and hiding, in a sense, your soul essence. And when you realize that that soul essence, that center for enlightenment that is in you has always been there, you realize that the process of soul evolution is a process of uncovering, of releasing all the personality self impressions that are covering over that center. Now, this video, this class is sponsored by the Center for Enlightenment, and Jane named it because the Center for Enlightenment truly is your soul. The Center for Enlightenment truly is in you. And that is the slogan that came to her for the Center for Enlightenment. The Center for Enlightenment is in you. But even though the Center for Enlightenment is in you, it covers over, it is covered over by a personality self. And there comes a time in your evolution when you begin to uncover, put your personality aside, and let the soul, in a sense, become the master of the personality. But how can you support your soul in its growing into mastery, uh, taking precedence over your personality self? By going within and quieting your mind in meditation. And so daily meditation is an important practice, and we'll talk more about that as weeks go on. But I want to ask you to consider, many of you are meditating every day. Many of you have been doing it for years. But if you've never done it before, consider taking five minutes a day, starting today, starting tomorrow morning, and begin to open up this channel, this direct contact between your limited self and your infinite self in God your soul. Now, I alluded a moment ago to the idea of reincarnation. And I've had people ask me, why does my soul have to reincarnate? What's the point of it? The truth is that your soul has been on a challenging pursuit that has brought you to this point on the spiritual path. You have grown in this process that has that propelled you forward in your evolution. And that process is called the law of rebirth or reincarnation. It provides an opportunity for your consciousness to explore and experience the vast arena of life. Remember I said that you have to get to know your whole self and your whole self includes eons and eons of evolving experiences, including many lifetimes as a human being. Through reincarnation, your soul ultimately arrives at the complete and conscious revelation that it is one with God. This is an amazing thing. 
and it gives your life purpose and meaning. And it's not just this humdrum world anymore. You wake up in your God self. And as your spiritual consciousness develops, you become more aware of your soul. Each incarnation increases your ability to know your true self that exists in God. Now, I've had people ask, and I've wondered myself, especially when I was first on this path, is my soul conscious of itself in God? Well, my soul is already my infinite self in God, but I am not conscious of that fact. I'm not consciously aware. You need many incarnations and a variety of opportunities to become fully aware, to come into that full awareness that you are a being, a God being. One lifetime isn't enough to fulfill and complete that goal. Through reincarnation, your soul ultimately arrives at the complete and conscious revelation that it is one with God. And there are things that you can do to increase this awareness. First off, every day, seek to merge your consciousness with the awareness of your soul. And I mentioned meditation, which is that powerful tool that connects you directly with your soul, but also becoming aware in every now moment of who you are, where you are in, in that now moment, that's called the observer self. And we'll learn more about that as the weeks go forward. What happens? as you gradually increase the awareness of your soul consciousness is that life begins to feel more purposeful, more meaningful, more fulfilling. And in a different way than just your pastimes, uh, frivolous things, you actually find it fun. It's exciting to grow and spiritually have meaning in your life. And while all this drama is going on out here, you know that in here something powerful is taking place. You know that on a deep level, you're expressing your divine purpose, a purpose that you agreed to before you came into this incarnation, a purpose that was placed in your soul as the DNA of God at the beginning of time. And as you awaken, you become more and more eager to develop even greater aspects of yourself. Now, there are some challenges on this journey. Don't get me wrong. And one of them is that things seem to move very slowly in terms of the soul evolution. I ask myself, why is my soul moving? Uh, it's not moving as fast as I would like it to. Uh, there's a tendency to get impatient. And the reality is, is that you and I have been around for so many eons of time that we have a lot of baggage that has to be offloaded, reduced, and let go. And so we must take it a little by little. It's a slow but sure day in, day out process. And I remember Jane saying, you know, if somebody could come up to you and pop you on the forehead and give you full enlightenment, it wouldn't mean anything because you wouldn't have earned it. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't know what to do with it. Instead, we grow into our soul awareness, becoming more aware of who we are, step by step, little by little, and getting to know our whole self in God. This process of growing in our awareness is also called becoming aligned with our soul. Every day, as we seek to merge our consciousness with our soul, we begin to realize that we are subduing the limited ego in order to unify and blend and align the soul with its unlimited individual God self. But we've got to do something called desire to initiate the process. In a car, you got a spark plug and that spark plug ignites the gasoline that allows the engine and the car to move forward. And the spark plug, the spark that ignites your spiritual growth on the path is called desire. Now, next week, perhaps, as the weeks go on, we're going to talk more about desire. But desire is that first important impulse, that God impulse in us that moves us forward onto this path. And then we back it up with commitment. And we'll talk about commitment as well. We have to generate this desire 
to move our souls forward in their evolution. And so I'm just going to read something that Jane wrote, and I, I just want to use her words because they're so beautiful. I want you to say, I am more. I am more than this body that is sitting here. I want to find out more about who I am. That's the most important thing that I can do. And if that is your desire, she says, then I am here to support you 100%. The soul is always teaching us. We're always learning from our souls. And every day holds new opportunities to learn about yourself, to uncover new gifts and spiritual understandings. Jane likes to say, and when she first said this, I didn't understand it. So hopefully I'll explain it to you. She used to say, every day is Christmas for her. Every day is Christmas day and every day there's a Christmas present. And then I came to understand what she really meant was every day provides some present, some learning experience, something that I can unwrap and open in terms of my spiritual growth. And some of those presents are inspiring and uplifting. And some of them um, are initially not what I would necessarily want to receive as a present. But if I open them up and truly put them to work, they will be my greatest gifts. So she suggested, if you want every day to be Christmas, to watch for those magnified instances in thought or situations that seem to stay in your mind, that are trying to show you what to discover or to release in your soul. Every day, ask the question, what is my soul trying to reveal within me? What is the gift that I am being given this day? What am I being taught? What is my soul trying to teach me? And then be on the, the lookout for those situations, those people that are mirroring something to you or are pushing your buttons. And journal about those situations to glean the message that is trying to emerge. And I'm going to present another spiritual power tool that I want you to take a look at because you can start with this right off the bat on page 40. In the spiritual power tool on journaling, there are five questions that you can use as journaling questions starting today. So when you feel like you're being given a present, when you're being given something to take a look at, a learning experience, you can use these questions. And the way I do it sometimes, especially if I'm not in a really good space, which is Every day at some point, uh, this happens, I will write down the first question, which is, what emotions am I feeling? And then I write down what I'm feeling. And then I would write down, well, who is it or what is it that pushed my emotions? And then I write the story of it, what actually happened. The third question is, does this always happen to me? Is this a pattern in my life? And I may see an earlier similar situation that I you know, have had maybe recur time and time again. And I begin to see patterns in my life. I might even look at it in terms of reincarnation and get a sense or a hint that perhaps this is something I came in with. And then the fourth and fifth questions give us the answers. And the fourth question is, what is my soul trying to tell me? And then I just open up. And sometimes I find my soul writes me letters from God. I'll just my soul is trying to show me that I'm supposed to uh, forgive. I'm supposed to expand my consciousness. I'm supposed to still my mind. My soul's trying to show me a new potential of my being. My soul is trying to show me uh, who I really am. Or sometimes I'll even uh, get my soul is trying to show me to just be still, just to let it be. And the fifth question is a, an interesting one. It says, if you were guided by your soul, rather than your ego, how would you handle things differently? So I even write, if I were guided by my soul rather than my ego, how would I handle this differently? And sometimes I write down, I wouldn't handle it at all because I'm supposed to leave it alone. Other times I'll get very specific guidance that I can use. You see, the thing about this whole evolution of the soul business is that it's extremely practical. We talk about theoretical this and uh, terminology and all these things. 
But the important thing is being able to journal and get the answers that we need and open up our intuition, which we'll be talking about in, in subsequent weeks as well. So as we ask the question, what is my soul trying to teach me today? We can journal about those situations and glean the messages that are there that are trying to emerge. And the soul is trying to give us a message every day. As Jane says, every day is Christmas. And the soul, now, now that your soul is coming to the fore and becoming the master of the personality self and the ego, you find that your soul helps you to navigate the difficult situations in life so that you are no longer confounded with or stuck in those situations. I've often heard Jane say, you know, you're going to go through these problems anyway. You might as well use them for your spiritual growth. You might as well consciously go through your soul evolution through the problems that are inevitable in life because they're part of life rather than being unconscious and just bruising your shins on the sharp edges of reality. And so it's such a joy to be able to consciously engage your soul and receive practical answers to your everyday problems. The first thing to realize, and you've heard this before, you're never put into a circumstance that is truly insurmountable. Every problem in your life has within it the seeds of its solution, but the solution cannot be found below a five on the spiritual thermometer in your ego. The solution cannot be found in the personality self or intellect mind that got you into the problem. The solution is only found above a five on the spiritual thermometer in that higher consciousness that is truly your soul essence. And so as you lift your awareness into your infinite self, you'll find that you are completely attuned and capable of taking every challenge on. The situations that are in your life are there to help you evolve into a higher state of awareness. And so what you start doing is instead of trying to avoid and defend yourself, put up walls against problems, you welcome every situation and you welcome every problem that comes into your life with thank you for this opportunity to learn and grow into God consciousness. Now, I find that if I'm in that state where I'm below a five and I'm not, I'm not getting it at all. If I just stop and I say, thank you for this opportunity to move into my infinite self. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the spiritual solution to this perfect problem. And I just let it go for a moment. Everything shifts. It may take a little while for that shift to show up in my conscious awareness. But first, the energy shifts, which is the important thing. And then, and then the answers start coming. Connecting with your soul answers your problems, and it then expands your consciousness. Because with each answered problem, each solution, you make more room in your awareness for more soul. It isn't exactly like your soul is growing, but your awareness or your consciousness of your soul is growing and expanding. As we've defined it, the soul is an individual portion of the mind of God. And when you develop a line of communication with your soul, your ideas begin to expand and your awareness of everything begins to increase. You start seeing things differently. I notice that as I have gradually moved into my soul awareness, I notice the beauty of nature, the trees and the birds and the clouds and the breeze, and also the beauty of other people. And especially those that I did, couldn't appreciate before, including myself and especially myself. What I found was that all solutions to every problem become available to me and my soul supports me in moving forward. Now, as you let your soul take charge over your life, you find that your soul always works in the best interest of your life plan. Now, I'm going to introduce this concept. We'll go deeper into it later. But you came into this lifetime with a life plan, a plan for what you were, in your soul's terms, going to learn and grow and uncover as a soul. 
And so your soul's ultimate happiness is its first priority. Your soul's ultimate happiness is the purpose of your life plan, because as you let go of these limitations and grow spiritually, you have a greater and greater capacity for happiness. Not happiness as we've defined it before. Happiness is uh, I, me, mine, but rather happiness that is lasting, not the things that can be taken away from you. And we all know these things all are here today, gone tomorrow. The body, the personality self, the likes and dislikes, and all the things in the world, the material things. These are the soul gifts, the true, what Jane calls the gems of the soul. Your soul, however, will also push you a little further than you think you can go. Otherwise, you you and I would both not, not grow. Uh, we have to be just a little bit stretching, and perhaps we could say a little bit uncomfortable. But when we take those steps, when we push through and allow ourselves to open up and say thank you for this opportunity, we'll find that we've broken through a limitation that has been holding us back all our life for many, for, for many lives. And as soon as we get comfortable in this new awareness, because we will get habituated, uh, we'll get accustomed with this new awareness and we get comfortable with it. And then we're urged to move forward again. It's constantly an unfoldment and we accept and we get comfortable and then we move forward again and we unfold even further. This is why we have to let go of our fears because our fears will never let us take the next step, the step that we need to take in order to grow spiritually. Your soul knows what pushes your buttons and that's part of the journey too. Your soul knows what's keeping you stuck and what you need to do in order to be free. And when you stop fighting that fact and start dancing with it and doing that dance of the soul, where are you going, okay, I'm gonna learn from this. Sometimes I seem to be moving backwards. Sometimes I seem to be moving forwards, but it's all a, an in, increasing expansion of the journey of the soul. So the question is, how can you make a commitment to your soul? Well, the reality is, is that there comes a time when you say there has to be a more, there has to be something else to this, because ultimately nothing on the third dimensional physical material plane will satisfy you. Ultimately, you, and I think there's a, a soul, soul dissatisfaction with the third dimensional human physical life that is a part of all of our spiritual evolution. And when you realize this, you know you have to make a commitment to yourself, to your infinite self. You know you have to say, I want to open the door to my higher consciousness. And so it begins with desire, and then you back it up with your commitment, which is your perseverance and your diligence, and you're taking responsibility for your soul's evolution. And the question comes up, does your soul make a difference in this world? Are we talking about lofty, otherworldly things? Or can we truly make a difference to help humanity, to help humankind and this world? The truth is that your soul's evolution is important to this planet. And if each one of us takes responsibility for our own soul's evolution, we are going to change the world. In fact, Taking responsibility for our own soul's evolution is the only way, ultimately, that we will change the world. Because although we will take action, it will be taken from above a five on the spiritual thermometer, from the soul level, not from the ego level. And with that in mind, you need to work in the best interest of the life plan that you have created for this lifetime, which includes your spiritual work showing up in this world to help make it a better place. The destiny of your soul is to walk out of the third dimensional world into the fourth dimensional consciousness, to walk out of the human self into the spiritual self, the walk out of the ego into the soul. And it is a journey of the gradual unfoldment of conscious awareness. 
the ultimate desire of your soul, which is really, you can feel it in your heart. Just ask yourself, what is the, what is the desire? If I was to boil down my heart's desire, what is it? If you really listen and you get in touch with what's in there in your heart, you'll find that your heart desires to know yourself as an infinite being. And what you're doing right now is activating through your desire, getting in touch with the desire of your soul that keeps working to awaken within you to a movement out of your limited beliefs and into the expanding possibilities that the universe has waiting for you. But that universe isn't separate from you because it's the center for enlightenment in you, your infinite self, your soul. And the question people have asked me, and I've heard them ask Jane is, will my soul ever find its freedom? And I'm just going to read to you her words because they're beautiful and I can't add anything to them. She wrote, I just want you to be aware that where you are right now and what you are doing right now is of the utmost important to your soul, importance to your soul because you are never going to have to deal with the things you're having to deal with now. You are going to get free of all of it. And I will tell you, when I was working through this stuff, I thought I was never, ever, ever, ever going to have another clean breath in my life. But things changed and revelations happened. New understandings happened. I became a new person, a new consciousness, if you will. And what you are doing is creating a new consciousness for yourself. So now as we're taking note of our souls and of the journey on which we're moving, the journey where we're heading, let's take this into a, a meditation time and just five minute meditation in which we're going to tap into that soul essence. And then we're gonna move into a, a little time of healing meditation where we're gonna support each other. The reality is that all the people all the energy that has been gathered here at this time in this place is one. My infinite self is your infinite self. My soul is your soul. And on the level of the soul, we are one. So we're gathering our energy together. So just close your eyes and allow yourself to become aware. Take a deep breath and feel just the feeling of the air upon your skin. Become aware of your breath and just let it be. So much has been said in the last few minutes about the soul, but this is the soul that I am experiencing right here and right now. And not only is it my soul, but it is the soul of everyone else who is gathered here in this class together. We are one. There is no separation. And beyond that, we are one with all humanity for no matter how each person is expressing, there is only one, one soul, one infinite self, and so as I tap into the vibration and energy of my infinite self, I quiet my mind. I still my thoughts. I relax with a great sense of ease and relief into the quiet, into the silence.
And now we take this opportunity to gather our energy together for healing. Where there is energy, there is healing, there is life. And as we gather and focus the life force energy of our shared infinite self, we place this energy and focus it on those people for whom we would like to see healing, including ourselves. We center each one in the love and light the focus and vibration of their true infinite self, their soul essence, which is one with our soul essence, which is one with all there is. And we see this not only for these ones, but for all of humanity Struggling, growing, healing, learning. And as we center the entire world and all of humankind in the love and light of their infinite self, there is a life plan. Not just for me, but for all and for humanity as a whole. Let that plan of love and light work out. And now, as we bring ourselves back into the presence of our rooms, we feel our physical bodies, uh, the air upon our skin, we may wiggle our toes and fingers and become aware of where we are physically and when we're fully aware of, of this physical form, we just open our eyes and we're grateful for the many souls that gathered here today to support us. And we feel that energy, we affirm that energy, and we hold each one in goodwill. And as you're bringing yourself back into the conscious awareness, I want to share with you that if you will um, hover your uh, arrow over the bottom of your screen and open the chat room to the right, you'll see that there is a donation um, announcement link. The Center for Enlightenment is supported entirely by the generosity of your love offerings, and we're grateful to you. If you want to support the center, uh, the ways to donate are posted in the chat and found on the course announcement page. So thank you for that. Also, I want you to know that um, there's a little homework I want to ask that you um, consider doing on a daily basis, and it's on page 67. It's called how to stay on the transformation track, how to stay on the transformation track. And it includes eight steps that you can do every day to keep yourself in alignment with your emerging soul, your evolving soul. The first is reaffirm your commitment to the spiritual journey. The second is meditate at the same time every day. The third is Observe your thinking and vigil vigilantly protect the bridge of your higher consciousness. Or confront your emotional patterns through journaling. And we got the lesson on how to do that. Five, when in doubt, forgive. Six, ask for guidance and listen for answers. Seven, don't dwell on the past or fret about the future. Remain powerfully present in the moment. And then eight, recite the prescription for spiritual alignment, which we did at the beginning, three times a day. And you can use that as a basis of meditation 
as you recite it, and we'll all do that with you. So this, um, how to stay on the transformation track is on page 67, and I hope you can use this as your tool this week to support your spiritual growth. We also want you to know that this and all of our classes will be archived and placed, uh, posted on YouTube um, in the next 24 hours, and a link will be sent out to um, share uh, where you can access that. Um, and you can also share that with other people. So anyone can experience this class with you. Also, we're going to have three sessions, question and answer classes during the week. They will um, be on Tuesday night at 7, Thursday night at 7, or Saturday at 11 a.m. And you will be receiving more information about that, and you can read about it and get the link in your uh, chat on the right-hand side of your screen. And you can certainly find out more about it from your course page. Also, the website contains um, self-study lessons, which you can use to, it, it's a plan step-by-step, week-by-week uh, lesson plan. Doesn't follow exactly the format we're doing, but it's something that you should be aware of. It has lots of videos of Jane Hart. And you can contact us with questions. And please, uh, we've got a contact uh, uh, link there uh, in our website that you can that you can go to. And there on the right now, I see this uh, on the chat is the Center for Enlightenment website. Anyway, I just want to thank you for joining with all of us uh, to experience the adventure uh, that is the evolution of the soul. And um, I'm so grateful to Jane Hart, who has been with us, um, present in consciousness and helping, uh, helping to support us on a spiritual level. And hopefully next week uh, in, or weeks to come, she'll be able to share and teach uh, with you uh, on her spiritual journey and the many experiences that she's had. So on behalf of the Center for Enlightenment, which is in you, um, thank you for coming and uh, have a, a beautiful, exciting week. And hopefully uh, we will see you on Tuesday or Thursday night at 7 or Saturday at 11 uh, for one of our question and answer sessions based on today's lesson. Thank you. Take care.